I think the most profound thing that I would say in terms of my philosophy, I like to say it in this way that um, I think that the world is round. And what I mean by that, you know, oftentimes people talk about, you know, life isn't fair, life isn't meant to be fair. When I say the world is round, it's around what you what you give, what you emote, how you share yourself, how you share your gifts. I believe that what you give is what you get. So when you are helpful to other people, when you're kind, when you're generous, you you get that back. And you get it back both because just when you do something that's kind, it feels good, even if nothing really comes of it. But it is also, I have found, very good in business. It, it leads to real economic value. Welcome to the Warriors at Work show. This is Gina Coomber, your guide and host. This is a show for men and women in the workplace who want to move from the predictable to the potent. This is your weekly dose of inspiration with an edge. I talk with CEOs and shamans, sports marketing executives and therapists. All of us are like-minded thinkers and doers who tell stories, share wisdom, and challenge each other to have the best life possible inside and outside the office. Welcome to your Warrior Conversation. Hey, everybody. It's Jeannie. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Warriors at Work show. I am so excited to bring to you the conversation that I got to have with founder and CEO of Noetic Consultants, Nancy McDonnell Reuter. She started the organization in 2002, and it is a marketing consultancy organization that's all about brands and people and culture. But what you're going to pick up so, so quickly is she and her team are so much more than marketing strategy and research and training. She takes such a personal and textured approach to her clients and to how she sees the world. And this is someone who embodies generosity, groundedness, kindness, a sincere care for other human beings, which is why I called this conversation the humanness of work. Who Nancy is, how she shows up every day, and the outpouring of, again, kindness and generosity that she puts out into the world is having a really positive effect on her personally and professionally. And I am so excited and happy that I get to talk to people like Nancy and serve up a conversation for all of you warriors out there thinking about yourself as you're ascending in your career, or maybe you're trying to revitalize your business, having a conversation with a leader like Nancy was so inspiring. And we talk about everything. We talk about, yeah, we talk about some work stuff, but we really talk about what are the ingredients of a good day? How about a crappy day? How do rituals and practices help keep us you know, on the course of our own evolution and growth and having a happy life. So this is a very personal and practical conversation. And I feel really, really privileged that I get to serve it up to all of you incredible warriors in my community. Enjoy. Welcome to Warriors at Work. This is Jeannie Coomber, your guide and host, and I'm thrilled to bring to you a conversation with an extraordinary person, Nancy McDonald Reuter. Nancy, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. So Nancy and I had a fairly circuitous route to this <laughs> moment. Uh, we both are from North Jersey. We actually went to competing high schools, did not know each other, graduated the same year. And we got connected through a colleague in Chicago. She's based in Bethesda, Maryland. I'm obviously in New Jersey. And within seconds of us having a conversation, we realized, oh my gosh, I cannot believe A, we're both from Bergen County, New Jersey, but B, there's so much crossover in terms of our personal philosophies, what we are looking for in the world. 
And I was so excited that you said yes to having a conversation with me here at the Warriors at Work show, because not only are you just an incredible person generally, but the founder and CEO of a very, very successful marketing and branding company called Noetic. And there's so much to your personal philosophy and approach to business and life that is so meaningful to share with other people. So what I would love for us to do is let's start the conversation by you sharing what is your personal philosophy? I mean, I'm tempted to just say that all roads lead back to New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. That's all I got. No. Yeah. But I do like to think that that is true. And, and I think that so much of my philosophy does come from my upbringing, you know, and the wonderful family that, that I had. I think the most profound thing that I would say in terms of my philosophy, I like to say it in this way that um, I think that the world is round. And what I mean by that, you know, oftentimes people talk about, you know, life isn't fair, life isn't meant to be fair. When I say the world is round, it's around what you what you give, what you emote, how you share yourself, how you share your gifts. I believe that what you give is what you get. So when you are helpful to other people, when you're kind, when you're generous, you you get that back. And you get it back both because just when you do something that's kind, it feels good, even if nothing really comes of it. But it is also, I have found, very good in business. It it leads to real economic value. When when you help people, it's not it's not linear per se. But it absolutely has that kind of impact. So I, I really believe that what you give is what you get. And if you give positive out, that's what you will find comes back to you tenfold. How did you realize that that was a philosophy that aligned with your sense of knowing? Like, where where did that come from? When I was a kid, I was like Lucy with the five cent thing where I was always doing therapy for my friends. So from a young age, I, I liked to listen and I liked to help people problem solve. And then as I came into marketing and, and strategy and research, you know, it's all really about understanding people. And so I, I think that I got there through a natural love of helping. And then I started to really see when I started my own business how much I, I was in a position to do that. You know, senior leaders, it's, it's tough, you know, it's tough and you, and you need someone that you can trust and confide in. And all of us need a sense of being connected. And so I spend a great deal of time, for example, um, connecting leaders to other leaders um, and I don't just say like, oh, so-and-so meet so-and-so, you know, I, I really listen to like, what are they looking to do? What do they need? And I try to find people I know and and find that mutual benefit. And, you know, I do that several times a week, you know, maybe even once a day <laughs> at times. So that's just an example. And I get a great deal of joy from doing it. And then I see all of the ways that it comes to fruition as people are able. And, and you can't even imagine some of the things that, that can come of that. But sometimes it's just being an ear. Sometimes it's just being a witness to what might be difficult or or sharing in, in a joy. So I think I just came to it through doing it and having it um, positively reinforced. I love that we're starting the conversation there, which you you really embody this notion of being so real, so authentic, and you bring your your like complete self to every conversation. And even how you just described that was just incredibly thoughtful. And I'm sure it is such a key ingredient to the success that you've had over 20 years doing what you're doing. And I'm just so thrilled that we can bring that message into this community for all of my warriors out there, whether you're in corporate America, whether you're an entrepreneur, um, we talk about this time and time again, this notion of like generosity is such a key piece to your strategy in building business and building relationships. And um, it's, it's available to all of us at any time, by the way. So 
what I, I'd love to do is uh, let's have a little fun here. Let's talk about this through the lens of Nancy. <laughs> First talk about Nancy's outstanding day. Like when you're knocking it out of the park, you're like, I'm amazing. I just did a great job. What happens? Okay. So I have a like somewhat elaborate way that I start my day um, before I ever start work. I have to get my head on. So um, that's that's how I say it to myself anyway. So I start first thing in the morning, very first thing before I brush my teeth, I meditate for 10 minutes. And I can like feel people like rolling their eyes. I mean, people are always like, oh, I know I should meditate. <laughs> Truly, it helps so much. And and if I'm totally honest, because I do it before I even get up, like sometimes I'm half asleep. Like, <laughs> am I sleeping or am I meditating? I'm not sure. <laughs> but but it, it's a it's a wonderful way to wake up. Mm-hmm. And and so that's like the first thing. And then I get up. I take care of my dog. I get my coffee, and I sit down and write in my journal. And I just blah, like whatever whatever needs to come out, whatever, you know, I woke up with on my mind. And I think it's really important to write as though no one's reading it, not even me. Like I don't even necessarily go back. It's just a one way street. And then at the, at the end of it, I write my list of gratitude, three things I'm going to get done that day. And one thing I'm going to let go of. Then I either get on the Peloton bike or I do yoga, uh, take a shower. And then importantly, and I actually learned this from a monk on YouTube um, <laughs> who talked about the things to do to start out your day. I reach out to people through texts that are on my mind, um, either just to tell them that I love them or to give them just a ray of sunshine, especially if there's somebody that I, I think needs it, like who might be going through a tough time. And that's just really key to getting your day off to a good start for me. And then, you know, once I'm, you know, caffeinated and I have my endorphins and all and and showered and all, you know, then I make my way either to my desk or, or to meeting a colleague out. And then my day is a mix of, you know, these days it's a lot of Zoom, some live meetings. Um, I, I meet with a lot of potential clients, existing clients, internal team, um, I try to have some thinking time and then to transition from my work to my evening, I might take a walk or do yoga to kind of transition out. And if I have my daughter, I have her halftime. Uh, if we like cook together and watch Gilmore girls, that's like a fantastic day. We're like obsessed with that show. And I know it was like a million years ago, but like, we're really, really, how, <laughs> I don't, we don't know what happened. So don't tell me. <laughs> how, how old is she? She's 17. So she's a senior. She's a senior in high school. My other two are one in college and one and one flown and grown. So that would that's a great day. Or, you know, because there's so much remote working, I I will oftentimes do some try to do something in the evening. If I didn't get out in the day, you know, try to do something in in the evening. So I I think that first start to the day, that first hour or hour and a half is really critical to me to getting like my feet on the ground and my head in the right space. We've never talked about this, but your routine is so similar to mine. It's actually kind of scary. Oh yes. Like there's, I don't think I've ever told people this, but the very first thing that I do, the moment I open my eyes, even if I've had a poor night's sleep, I will say, thank you. I woke up today and I'll say simple things like, thank you for this pillow. Thank you for the sheets. Um, how am I feeling? I just start to get in a conversation with, it's not necessarily yeah. quote unquote meditation, but it is some form of dialogue. Right. Get up dog follows me, take care of her. I grab a journal and I write whatever comes to my mind. And a lot of times it becomes, I find if I get it out of my body, out of my mind, I don't ruminate on it. Yes, exactly. And then I can see the pattern of my thinking. I can see my word choice. And then from there, it usually informs me of other things. And then I have another practice where I do three brags things I'm proud of, three gratitudes, and three things I desire for the day. But I'm going to add the let go. I love that. Yeah, that's something that I added more more recently. And and I couldn't, I, first of all, I just love that we're doing that because now, 
in the mornings, I'm also going to be thinking of you and how we're like parallel pathing. In- yes. But I so agree that the the journal thing, it helps illuminate what is on your mind so that you can either put it down. Um, I love the expression, if it's heavy, put it down. I love that. I've never heard that. Um, but, but it also might be something that you want to pursue. Like, you, you know, it might be something you're excited about or a problem you're trying to solve. I mean, the, you know, the creative flow of that, that wake up time and those in between times, you know, in the shower, when you're taking a walk, when you're first waking up in the morning, falling asleep at night, this is when we really can access that part of our brain that can help us, you know, problem solve. But sometimes it is put it down, you know, just yeah. spew it and, and, and put it away and don't let it burden you for the day. I find it, it keeps me from sleepwalking through something. It yeah. brings it to my attention, whether yeah, it's good or bad. Well. They'll need some attention and some care and some nurturing and feeding. So I just can't believe that we have that. It's a North Jersey thing, obviously. It's got um, <laughs> So tell us about a difficult day for Nancy. So a difficult day. So I am always impatient for progress. So, um, you know, if I feel that I'm not this, this is one of the things I often have to let go is being a hyperachiever because being a hyperachiever, it just, you know, it's just a beast that's never satiated. So, you know, more, 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 more. So if I have a day where I feel like I'm just not able to move things forward the way I would like that, that can lead to getting my getting frustrated and I have to, you know, acknowledge and find my patience. I would say the other thing, particularly in the last year and a half is if I'm not getting out enough to be with humans, Mm. I, you know, I, I have, our team is remote hundred percent right now. We're just doing quarterly live gatherings and it works really well for us, but I need people. Um, I mean, I think we all, we all need people. And so if I get too isolated in my house, that can also lead to a difficult time. So I have to really look at my week and try to troubleshoot for that. Now that we have the ability to get out, you know, we can be more with people. I just have to be more proactive about making sure I'm, I'm baking that in. I'll tell you quickly when, so in January, 2021, you and I may have talked about this. I got COVID. And I was, I was quite sick. I wasn't in the hospital, but I, but I was not mild. And I was in my house for 16 days by myself. Oh my gosh. 16 days. I counted them. (laughs) And granted, I was like super sick and I needed to be, you know, isolated, but like me and my dog, it was really hard. It also, as these things go, was a tremendous gift because I know at a whole new level how to be alone. And, and I think it's an important skill that we all need to have. And then my level of gratitude now in being with people is just, I think, at a whole new level. Oh. Curious in, in those moments, and this goes for any really moments of difficulty. Um, what's your go-to to, I would often say, I need to, sh- I need to shift my energy especially if I'm grinding and I'm overly focused on something that's bugging me or giving me discomfort, what shifts you? What do you do? Yeah. Moving my body um, and, and, and getting into my body and out of my head is key. So it might be taking a walk, just getting outside. Um, doing yoga is a fantastic way. If I really need like a significant shift because it puts me, out of my head and in my body for, you know, a full hour or, mm-hmm. or an hour and a half. Um, in a pinch, I'll do 10 deep breaths, like really deep breaths. And it's amazing. Like if you commit to 10 deep breaths at the end of those breaths, you are in a different place. It like mm. oxygenates your blood and it, it, it really makes a difference. And you can do that anywhere. So like, you know, sometimes you can't, get up and go outside because you're in the middle of a really frustrating meeting or whatever, Mm -hmm. but you can do those breaths anywhere. Let's, let's talk about your company because uh, one of the things that I loved, loved, loved is I'm just going to look at my notes here. These really powerful seven values. They're a bit unique. Uh, I want to read a few and I'd love for you to tell us, you know, why this is important and how this plays out. Uh, for you and the organization that you're leading, but also how you're engaging your clients. 
the dynamic positivity, which again, anybody watching or listening can immediately pick up that on you. Collaboration without egos, help and kindness first. So talk to us about these. Yeah. And, and the ones, so we have seven and we, we take them all very seriously and we weave them into what we do all the time. But the three that you named are the most foundational three. And, and we also help clients create values and figure out how to live their values. Sometimes they have values and they're just not living them. Sometimes, you know, they don't have them created. So it's in the work we do. And then we also really walk that talk ourselves. Um, dynamic positivity is not about saying, you know, have you ever seen that visual of there's like fire burning behind this woman and she's like, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's not, it's not toxic positivity. It's not Pollyanna, but it is about always having a mindset of how can we, as opposed to this sucks. Yeah. You, right. And, and you can have the, it sucks moment. We all need to have that moment, but then rolling up our sleeves and saying, okay, how can we constructively problem solve? So we really look to do that with each other. And we look to do that with, our clients. An example, though, of where you really have to strike that right balance, there is such a thing as toxic positivity, where you're just shoving down or away, you know, things that are problems. In our own team, for example, we start our Monday team meeting with good news. And we don't require that everybody provide any. So if you're just not feeling it that day, you you don't have to share. But by having that as the place that we start, whatever anybody else has to bring can help bring up, you know, the mood of, of the overall team. So that one is super foundational. Collaborating without egos, we're super team oriented. We collab, I would say we collaborate intensely on everything we do. And so when we're hiring at Noetic, we say to people, you know, when you write something, create something, someone else is going to touch it. We believe that always makes the work better. So there's going to be people touching your stuff. <laughs> mm. And if that's uncomfortable to you and you're more of, you know, someone who really likes to work in a solo manner, this might not be a fit for you. So we really try to be very overt with people about what that means. Now, you also have to know when to make a decision and go. You can't do everything democratically with, you know, all hands touching everything. But we're always working in these mini teams and, and we feel like two heads is better than one. Um, and, and the without egos is also key. And that comes in with if someone is touching something that you did that you know that there's they're leading with good intent and you don't get defensive about whatever changes they might be suggesting. You can speak mm -hmm. back to them, but, but you know, you're not, you're not going to get defensive about it. Um, health and kindness first is by far and away my favorite of our values. And, you know, I talked a little bit about that as you were asking me about like overall philosophy, we weave that in with existing clients, with people in our, in our network, um, in whatever way we can be helpful and and with each other. And that help, that idea of, of, of any kind of tangible help, whether it's being a sounding board, whether it's providing an introduction, whether it's helping somebody find a job, whether it's helping somebody who's um, stuck with a business challenge, who wants you know 20 minutes of your time to talk it through and have ideas, all of those things are always on the table and we proactively look for those opportunities internal to the team. We'll send notes to each other, literally entitled help first. And, you know, and whatever the thing is that we're trying to do for maybe we need help or, or we're trying to help someone else and someone, usually many will always reply to you. With wow. help. You know, what's so powerful about these values too. It's very obvious when someone's not, demonstrating yeah. these values it, it it makes a lot of other choices a lot easier if somebody's coming in or somebody you're working with even if it's a client that is not representing these values but might be representing the opposite of some of these words makes the decision to continue or not continue a lot easier a lot it's easier. very true and it is it's very it's very cultural and we have to be very culturally sensitive to the clients that we're working with while keeping our culture 
with its integrity. And so there have been times we have gotten into some serious conversations, not that often, with some leaders and thought, you know, this is not, this is just not a values fit. More mm-hmm. so, um, I would say in the hiring process, our first screen that we do when we talk to people is values only. That, that's the only thing we're looking at because we really believe we can teach you the skill set, but we can't tell, we can't teach you how to be kind if you don't value being kind. <laughs> mm, I love that, that that's one of the key pieces of the interview process. Ooh, that's yeah. good for thought. Yeah. So, and you know what? Like so many people have come talking to us about the values before we even raised it. So if you, if you go on your, our site, they're there. And oftentimes people raise it before we even raise it. That that's a really good sign. Mm. I think that's why I was drawn to it. I, I love, not only did I get to experience it firsthand and talking with you, but the fact that it wasn't just something you said, I could tell it was something that you all embody and live by. And they are, they're guiding principles, if you will, for how things occur. So you've been in business for 20 years. So you've worked with a variety of clients. Um, it's 19 and three quarters. Cause it's 19, 19 and three quarters <laughs> then. Okay. Years in 2022. Yeah. Okay, so in the 19 and three quarter (laughs) years, I would love for you to talk about something you're really, really proud of. Oh, gosh. Um, It's a long time, 19 and three quarters years. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I feel proud of a lot of things. I, I think if I were to pick one thing, and we looked at this recently, and I was really amazed at what the statistics showed, um, is how many times we get rehired, we get, you know, repeat clients. Mm. Over half the time, we get hired again by by clients that we've had before, because we we looked at it. And, and in many cases, we get hired, you know, multiple times, whether that's phases of work, whether that's, you know, this leader was at this organization, went on to another organization, hired us there, what have you, both, both in each happen. Why that's so meaningful to me is that it helps me know that we're we're really helping them make true change, positive change, and, and impact. Or else, you know, why else would they mm-hmm. <laughs> work with us? Exactly. Again? Um, you know, I'm also proud. Like we we do um, we do a lot of market research, consumer research, branding, uh, coaching, and training. So, like in the training space. Um, We have trained over 9,000 marketers um, over the years, which is just, it's just crazy. It's a, it's a crazy number. I know. I agree. It's a crazy number. University. Right. Yeah. So we've done, you know, just big programs, you know, with, with organizations where, you know, many, many people have, have come through. Um, Yeah. So I, and and brand wise, um, I think the number was 60 something, you know, 60 something brands in 19 and three quarter years that we've helped shape, whether that was a new to the world brand, you know, refining the brand, relaunching, completely reimagining, you know, anywhere on that, on that scale. So yeah, those are some, some of the things. I mean, I, I just, I love my work. Like I just really feel so blessed that I had the notion to do it. Mm. When you think back on the 19 and three quarter years, is there a unique client that really stands out that you, that you learned a lot from the experience? Yeah, I get really excited about every new client. Cause I love, I love learning a new business and, you know, everything that's like going on. I remember in particular being, like super excited when we got hired to work with Nike um, because I've always looked at that brand as, you know, it's iconic and and they get so much right in that, in that space. And Samsung's another one where um, when we started first working with Samsung, they were really going toe to toe with Apple for the first time um, because they finally had in mobile, like true competitiveness there. So that was just, just a really special time. But but your question is around unique. So um, I think that the most unique learning experience that I've had is with an organization that you may not have heard of called Lumina Foundation. They're based out of Indianapolis. They are a private foundation. 
and their mission is to get more adults to get further in their education beyond high school. So ideally that they would get to college completion and or a furtherance in their career. And they're very creative and expansive in how they define that. So it's really about getting getting adult learners further, whatever that would mean for those adult learners. So what I love, I, I love the mission. I think it's so relevant, maybe even more relevant this year than it was last year than it was the year before. Mm. And, and I love the way they go about it because they're really innovative in the ideas that they have and the initiatives that they pursue to get it done. And within the organization, any leader can come forward with their idea and get funded to, to make that idea happen toward that overall mission. And then also they're just delightful to work with. So like we can never stop raving about them and we've helped them with their corporate brand. They've, we've helped them with their CEOs branding. We've done, you know, research and various things for them over. Oh. So let's talk about you, the person, Nancy, the individual, this incredible human being. Let's first talk about what does your support circle look like? Yeah, I, I have a wonderful circle. Um, you know, from a, from a friend's perspective, um, I have, I have wonderful friends near and far. Um, and I have this big Irish family that, um, mostly emanated from New Jersey, although we've migrated all, all over now. Um, so I'm, I'm very blessed in that regard in my, in, in more my business community. And then there's sort of this hybrid area, I would say between kind of business and personal in the, in my business community, I have two really key areas where I get a lot of support. Um, one is WPO and one is Vistage. So WPO is a, uh, a women CEO, uh, organization and it has localized chap- chapter. So I'm in the DC chapter and I've been in this chapter for many years and, you know, we just call each other, our WPO sisters. We're, we're there for each other, personal, professional, everything in between. Before I had that group, it, I, I mean, I went from feeling like, is there anybody out there doing what I'm doing, particularly maybe a female? <laughs> you know, I just didn't know anybody who was doing what I was doing. And then all of a sudden I had this community. It was, it was literally like water in, in the desert. And, and I want to give a big shout out to um, Renee Lewis, who's our who's our fearless leader. She is amazing. She's one of the best facilitators. And I've seen a lot of facilitation and do a lot of facilitation. She's one of the best facilitators and problem solvers. And she, she leads that group. And then Vistage is a global organization, which again, works in local chapters. Um, I belong to a Vistage group in Frederick, Maryland, which is quite a drive from where I live, but I wanted to work with this particular Vistage chair, Ed Robinson, who I learned about um, and then like made it my business to get in his group because Ooh. he's so amazing. I do not know what I would have done in the pandemic without that group. It, it, we were meeting at times we were meeting weekly, you know, in, in the height of it, just, just holding each other up, informing each other, motivating each other, some of the most honest and raw conversation. And and what are you seeing? What are you seeing? What are you seeing? And people helping people. I mean, it was just amazing. Such such a lifeline. I, I joined a few months before before 2020. <laughs> so I was like, thank God. Talk about um, divine. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And then um and then I have this kind of hybrid space genie of like People who like one of one of the women I work with would always joke with me. She's like, "So is this person a friend? Are they a work friend? <laughs> and like, they're both. They're yeah, both. It's so yeah. these people that I've just known for years and years, and we kind of move from you know maybe they started as a client or they were in my network, but we're like, are they are they a dear friend? Yes. Are they also a work friend? Yes. Like they're they're both. And I want to tell you a quick story about this one guy. Shout out to Ken Dice, who. Um, We knew each other for many, many moons ago. He became head of marketing at Discovery. He was giving us, this is early days, like I'm new running this business and he's giving us all this work and all this work. And one day I go to him and I'm like, you know, um, like you want us to do this one thing, um, you know, 
we've never done this before. Like I have, I don't know how to do it. Like, I just like, do you know that? You know? And he was like, yeah, I know, but I know you and you'll figure it out. And, and I was like, okay. And so we did, and it was this great initiative. And like, people still talk about this, this thing. We had a offsite at Hershey and Hershey, Pennsylvania with the whole marketing department. Um, And then he went on to Nike and, you know, we did a whole body of work there. And now like all these years later, we're collaborating on a client together. So like that, like, I mean, we've known each other for all these years. So I have these hybrid people, which is like a terrible term for it. I want like a better name for it, but these angels, you know, in my life um, who I've just known for years and years, I just went to another one's daughter's wedding, which is like a whole nother level right now that I'm like old enough that like my friend's daughters are getting married. So I like know him and his family and have seen him, you know, grow up to be this amazing leader. And we knew each other back when. So I just am completely blessed in that space just the way in which I'm surrounded by support. My mentor used to call who you just described that that would fall into the crucial associates column. Nice. That's so much because, better hybrid. Because they, <laughs> they are par, right? they're more than just sort of business relationships where there's, you know, obviously reciprocity, there's all of this cross pollination and then you're, you know, providing a tremendous service and, and I'm sure they give back to you too. in in, in many ways, but then there's that crucial associates column where there's so much richness and history and inherent trust. trust. Months can go by. I literally just was thinking about this. So interesting that we're bringing this up. A dear, she's an, uh, she was originally a client. She became a dear friend and colleague. She's I've watched her career just transform, and now she's in a very senior role. I haven't talked to her in probably six months. And she sent me a voice note, not just a text, a voice note. And it was so weird because I was just thinking of her yesterday. So I sent her back a voice note and we haven't spoken, but she's been so incredible to my ascension. And I've been just as in, in, important to hers, but it's one of those things like, and I know when we connect, it's like no time has passed, right? right something will come of it. And that relationship that you just described has had so many dimensions, but it goes back to what you were saying initially around your personal philosophy. Yes. It's grounded on some of those, those basic beliefs that you have and you're attracting people in that share that same belief system. Yes. And I want to mention, you know, life is long and careers are long. And as much as so many of these people, you know, they've done such great and notable things, but people also have dark days. And so back to, you know, the health and kindness first, one of the things that I have made it my business to do is when somebody like that has a dark day, they get laid off or they're working in a toxic environment or something happens to them, their health, their spouse, their kid, whatever. I really try to be the person who shows up. Um, I especially think that when people lose jobs, many times people don't, don't lean in. They don't reach out. They don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. And so they don't do anything. Whereas if something tragic happens, everybody crowds around, but then doesn't keep, um, long-term focus. And so a month or so later, you know, there's no one around you. So I try to zig where others zag. So when something happens critical where I think people are leaning out, I'll lean in and, you know, I try to fill the gaps. And and then when, you know, there's more something of a grief orientation, I know they're going to get it in the initial. And then I try to be there in the, in the, not that I, not there initially, but, you know, in the, in the longer tail, because when people have their dark moments, you know, just who's walking with you. You can't, you can't fix it, but if, but, but if you cannot be alone. Wow. That just gave me chills. How you just described that. Um, yeah. Just and yeah. I've had some of my own and, and, yeah. and people have walked with me. Yeah. And those, and those are the people where you, you can say, I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm lost. Um, I don't feel like I can do this. I don't feel good enough. Right. Whatever that is. It's so important that we have all of those types of relationships. 
I am going to end with this one question. I don't want this to end. <laughs> <I'm> so, <laughs> yeah. Can we keep okay. going? <laughs> um, when you think this about a telethon, I thought we were on it. I know, like <laughs> four hours. No. I'm <laughs> um, when you think about yourself, now just put you back into the CEO founder role, and here you are leading an organization for 19 and three quarter years, working with some incredible clients, national, international clients. When you think about this conversation we've just had, and we've talked so much about your personal journey as a leader, as a human being, um, bringing forth all of that humanness into the world, which I think is such an important reminder for everybody that that's really your most authentic, effective self is when you can tap into all of those parts of you. What do you want people to walk away with from this conversation? Um, a couple things. Um, I, I would encourage people to treat the world as round, you know, just, just give and know that when you give, you'll get joy and, and you'll get a lot back. I think that that's so much where the joy of life comes from. And if we do the opposite, then, you know, we isolate ourselves and, and we're less happy. So I think that would be the biggest thing. Um, I also want to say something about fear. Um, I've learned a lot about fear and, you know, I think a lot of us know at this point, our brains are wired to fear. Um, I'm, I'm a big subscriber to this philosophy around really understanding your relationship with fear and displacing fear with learning and curiosity. So when you have a learner's mentality and you stay curious, you completely displace fear because when you're in a learning mentality, there's no failure at risk. It's all just learning. And so you really can't be in both. You can't be sitting in fear and be curious at the same time. So I think acknowledging our fear, but really pushing ourselves into curiosity is also a, a, a key thing that I would, um, that I would recommend. Um, I don't think any of us realize how much fear is there all the time. Like our brains are just always pushing us back in that space. So we really have to push back against it. But when you do, it's, it's very freeing and empowering. Mm. Sometimes fear is not a good enough reason to not do something. So well said. Yeah. Fear is helpful when you are, being, you know, chased by a saber tooth tiger or, you know, to keep your hand away from a hot stove. <laughs> it's not like there aren't moments that it's not appropriate to have, you know, your fight or flight kick in, but it kicks in for us way too often. And we're not aware how much our dark shadow is dictating and limiting what we do and what we feel. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Warriors at Work show. If you are interested in learning more about what we do at the Warriors at Work show and platform, be sure to go over to my website, Jeannie Coomber, and subscribe to my monthly Warrior Playbook newsletter. I share everything that I'm up to month by month, as well as some lessons and insights that I've learned. I'm also interested in hearing any feedback you have about this conversation or future topics. So reach out to me directly on jc at jeanniecoomber.com or on LinkedIn. Be sure to tell your friends and your colleagues about this Warriors at Work conversation. Subscribe, review, and rate us. It's the best way to get this message out into the world. Be well.